We've just gone back to green flag racing here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Greg Biffle is your race leader, our sixth different leader right now, with Brendan gone second, Brad Keselowski third, Justin Algar fourth, Tony Raines in fifth. Some of those guys did not pit. We can tell you, Casey King, remember he restarted 24th? Well, he's already moved up to 11th. And there he is in that 38 car, coming on strong. Carl Edwards right behind him there. And here comes Kyle Busch into the mix as well with Scott Wimmer in the seven. Slow traffic, Morgan Shepard down on the apron. Everybody gets by him safely. We're inside of uh, that halfway point now. Laps are going to be winding now. We're going to see guys doing a lot more taken. And a lot less spots. given. That's exactly right. That's <laughs> what always happens here. What makes this place so exciting. Well, the 38 of Kane clears Michael Annette as he continues his march towards the top. He's now up to ninth position. Remember, it was Kane who gave Dodge its last win in this series back in August of 2007, right here at this racetrack. I'll tell you, he's got a good handling race car because he's working the bottom now, and you saw him earlier in the race working the very top of the racetrack. That's how he made all that ground up and actually got the lead. So he's having to, he's forced now to work on this bottom because these cars won't give up that top groove. Well, that's Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and that's for eighth. So it looks like he has got himself a race car right now that is not cooking. Yeah, and by taking that tape off, a lot of other places we'd be talking about that really affecting the handling of his car, but not here at Bristol. So Kane moves back up into the eighth position. Next target, Scott Legacy Jr. And there he goes around Legacy's. Man, he's got that car going. Now remember, see. some of these other cars have stayed out there longer. He's got fresher tires. Yeah, but so does Carl Edwards. You saw him get fresh right sides, and he's not able to keep pace with Casey Kane right now working around this traffic. And you see Casey actually gets a couple cars in between him and Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch now right behind Carl. And we'll have to see how those two tires affect Carl Edwards' chance at winning this race. That wasn't what they planned on doing when they came in. Carl slipped through the pits a little bit, and then they decided to abort that and just put the two tires on. We'll see how that works for him in the last 50 laps of this race. You're not missing anything up front. Biffle is leading Brendan gone by three-tenths of a second. It has pretty much stayed that way. And we've been sort of focusing on where all the passing has been going on here at this half-mile Bristol Motor Speedway. And here goes Edwards. Oh, look out. Could get a little dicey there. He gets under Stenhouse. Can he make it stick? You can see the back end kick out a little bit on Carl Edwards' car right there. These are teammates racing side by side. Kyle Busch is going to try that high side. He's thinking that maybe Stenhouse might hold Carl Edwards off and he can pick up a spot like that. Yeah, Stenhouse might actually get trapped behind this 34 car. And that's for position. I mean, Tony Raines is fighting along with Legacy for seventh right now. So some great battles going on. Some of these cars on a lot older tires than some of the others. And here comes Carl Edwards on fresher rubber and getting around him. And now Kyle Busch gets blocked. Yeah. Battle for second place, starting to get a little closer. Here comes Justin Allgaier. Remember, he finished fifth here last year, his first trip to Bristol and his first top five in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. He's got Brendan gone in his sights. Up ahead is race leader Greg Biffle. Vince, what's the latest on the 62? What a great run for Brendan gone. Remember, he didn't have the greatest qualifying effort. Started 22nd, but he was confident that Brad Parrott would have him a good race car, and that is exactly the case. You get a good look at Brad Parrott there, second on uh, the right of your screen. And uh, Brendan gone told me earlier today, he said, I'm not the best when it comes to setup, but Brad Parrott's got enough knowledge and experience for both of us. I think we'll have a good car. Certainly has been the case, but they've got about 64 laps on these tires right now. Well, I talked to these guys uh, back in the garage area earlier this weekend, and Brad was saying, Toyota gives me so much data. He says, I'm having difficulty sorting it all out right now and making it work to Brendan's driving style. Yeah, it's one of those things when you talk about chemistry, trying to get everybody uh, working together, and they do have a lot of data now coming from the Toyota uh, engineers and all the other teams, and it, it has paid off, though. I mean, you look at what's going on right here. Brendan Gaughan's having a great race. He's running right down uh, next, right now, trying to look on the outside of Greg Biffle for the lead. 
For more on uh, Greg Biffle, let's check in with Jamie Little. Well, this is the fourth consecutive race that he has led this year. The team is ecstatic right now. Greg just told his crew, I am too tight to run down on the bottom, so he's just trying to run for all it's worth up top. He told me before he got in the car, he feels like the California race was his and it got away. He is so hungry to get a win. Keep in mind, while watching Greg Biffle, it has been five years since this team has gone to victory lane. Well, his only short track victory in 20 career wins came at O'Reilly Raceway Park back in August of 2002. All right, take a look at the uh, top five at the top of your screen as we are working lap number 172 of 300 at Bristol. It's not over yet. Riding with Justin Allgaier at Bristol, and if you are a... Uh, check the motorsports calendar for a Saturday night showdown at Bristol. Uh, NASCAR legends Pearson, Yarborough, many more are going to run a 35-lap race for charity here at Bristol. That's tonight at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Then the NHRA drag racing, the four wide nationals from Charlotte. Qualifying next Saturday, 7 Eastern. Finals next Sunday, 5 Eastern. That on ESPN2. Something new in drag racing. That should be fun to watch. The Eyes on IndyCar Series is at St. Petersburg. Danica Patrick at all in the field on the streets there. Next Sunday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. And then the NASCAR Nationwide Series in Nashville, 3.30 Eastern. That is uh, coming up a week from next Saturday, April the 3rd. That's on ESPN. That's the next race for this NASCAR Nationwide Series. And as we ride along with uh, Justin Allgaier, I want to mention that if you're a Verizon Wireless customer, uh, text the word CHAMPION to 43776 for an exclusive Champions Chat. From our NASCAR Now Roundtable experts, every Monday when we're uh, gathered up in our ESPN studios, we talk about uh, a particular topic of the week that interests us, and it's available to you if you're a Verizon Wireless customer by texting that to that. Check it out. In the pit studio with Rusty Wallace and Brad Darty watching the first two-thirds of this race unfold. Uh, Rusty, Greg Biffle is leading on older tires. Casey Kane has had the dominant car, trying to come back through after overheating problems. Got Edwards and Kyle Busch trying to pick their way back through after pitting recently. <laughs> How do you make sense of all that? Oh, there's a lot of stuff to, to <laughs> take a look at right there. No doubt about that, guys. But I'm pretty impressed with this tire that these guys brought here that they just brought this week. This is the same four tires they developed for the Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis. In fact, it's the same compound right here. You see these top three guys, they haven't pitted. They pitted last time on lap 92 and they're still going. But you know, as I'm looking back through the field a little bit, the guy I'm really concerned about right now is actually Casey Kane. He had that motor overheating real bad, Brad. And boy, when you get a motor that hot, you just don't know if it's gonna last. Oh, the leaders, the leaders are right in the middle of that. Oh, Greg Biffle sneaks through. But Brendan gone does it. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. We're in it, Brad. We saw Tony Raines get a little sideways the there. The Shelby the Howard had nowhere to go and just, oh, man. Tore up some and good Casey race cars. Kane. Oh, man. Tore up some good race cars. Brendan Gall was having a heck of a run, doing a great job. Had that car up front. Was just managing those tires. He had a lot of laps on those tires. The boy just nowhere to go. So caution out for the sixth time. Uh, Marty, Andy, and DJ, we're going to get the answers to some of those strategy questions now in a minute. But boy, that was close for some of the leaders. Yeah, it was, and a tough break for Casey Kane because we were watching and we were all pretty much in agreement that uh, it looked like he had the best race car out there at that particular stretch. Yeah, and right behind, you know, that, right behind them were the leaders racing really hard. Keselowski, Biffle, and Allgaier. Looks like uh, Keselowski wound up with the lead when the caution came out. Go back and take a look at it. Well, watch the 34. Tony Range is kind of caught in the middle there, and Shelby Howard gets into him. And they get together again. Kenny Wallace gets through, but not Brendan Gone and not the 38 of Casey Kane. Just an all guyer. Bam. Well, things, as we said, just happen so quickly here. You've got basically one chance to try to make a move, and those guys just didn't have enough room. On board with Casey Kane. Right here, you can see that happening. Check up, check up, check up. Get low, get low. Get but you low, just can't get, get your car slowed down enough. Yeah, you want it to stop it. Just, yeah, just know it. Yeah. These are 3,400-pound cars. See right there, Biffle had the lead through all that. Out comes Keselowski. Oof. Big hit. Take a look at Greg Biffle. Keep an eye on the 27. 
This happens directly in front of Greg Biffle. You talk about being lucky. Well, well he got slowed down. Tell you what, give credit to Allgaier because he could have gotten into Biffle and could have taken them both along for the ride. Really paying attention. 